Hi, this is John Rothman. I'm a managing principal of ZS Associates Oncology Vertical. I'm joined here at ASCO 2018 by Dr. Deborah Pat. Dr. Pat is the Executive Vice President of Texas Oncology and the Director of Analytics for U.S. Oncology. Good morning. Good morning. We're here today, Dr. Pat, at ASCO 2018, and the topic is all around precision medicine right, and hitting that target. Um, and it's a great year to talk about this because I think we've seen some advances. We've seen um, things like the approval of Oncomind DX and Foundation One uh, CDX. Uh, we've also seen approvals of therapies such as Keytruda for uh, MSI high patients, and we've seen um, uh, advances such as Loxo Oncology uh, targeting the NTREC mutation, and this year the, the talk is all about the REP mutation. Um, so we're really getting to a point where um, we have some tools to identify uh, these, these mutations and also some therapeutic options. I would love to hear a little bit about uh, which of these advances has impacted your practice at Texas Oncology the most. So many of them have impacted our practice in Texas Oncology. It's been, uh, it's an incredible time to be an oncologist. I often tell people it's like being an infectious disease specialist in the 1940s. I feel like we're getting all the good drugs. And I'll say that I think the paradigm of cancer care has really changed to where we don't just have patients in acute phase of treatment, but really we manage cancer more like a chronic disease, and that's been incredibly beneficial for patients. The next generation sequencing piece has also been transformative to our practice. You know, we're seeing an evolution there. What we've seen over the last decade has been infrequent use of next generation sequencing um, historically in patients that have, uh, for example, non-small cell lung cancer, when there are specific actionable mutations. And what we see more and more now is that there is more widespread use of next generation sequencing, especially when we think that there is a chance of even a low prevalence target that's either FDA approved or available in clinical trials. So a couple of things are changing in the market, I think, that will allow this to be um, easier for us. One, I think that as technology advances, um, the cost is disrupted for these tests. And you've seen approval of newer tests. We see that it's now less expensive to test for more um, targeted identifiable candidate genes. Um, uh, and so that becomes uh, more actionable in our clinic because it's not cost prohibitive for patients. We've also seen policies emerge. So you've seen CMS come out uh, with guidance around next generation sequencing. Um, and I think that when there's guidance, you know, payers generally follow suit. Policies that support utilization, um, uh, you have um, you know, more actionable uh, therapeutic interventions, either that are soon to be FDA approved or available in the clinical trial setting, and you have lower cost. The critical piece is this informatics piece, which is highly complex because it has to be built within the structured data of your electronic health record. And there's certain nomenclature that is required to make sure that it's interpreted correctly. Because for example, you would not want just an alteration in a gene to be noted as a binary variable like yes or no. It's much more complex than that to understand if it's actionable to certain drugs. And so it's this informatics platform that we all need in order to make these kinds of NGS assessments more actionable. Even the, you know, the most up-to-date subspecialist needs guidance in this space because um, using molecular medicine to make these kind of treatment decisions, especially when they're research decisions, um, requires a great deal of guidance. And so by building precision medicine into the clinical decision support architecture, it allows our electronic health record to nudge clinicians to make the right actions based on the next generation sequencing data. And that's critical. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Thank Pat. You. It's been a pleasure talking to you and hope you enjoy the rest of your ASCO. Thank you.